And I think we take them for granted sometimes. Hard work that they have. And when they don't feel well, they're here, they work, and they're faithful, and we appreciate them very, very much. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Let's go ahead and turn to the first chapter. I'm going to be going through several uh, different ones. And let me also say to you that uh, if you have the U version of the Bible on your tablet or your smartphone, we still are having trouble getting in where you press the live event. But there is a, an, uh, in your, if you'll put it in your browser, I think Ashley is putting that up right now on the screen, exactly what you did last week. And follow that link in your browser to bible.us slash e slash nnk. And that should take you to our notes if you have a smartphone or a tablet. And you'll see those already and you actually won't have to jot things down. And it'll be a little easier. We're still working with the, the, uh, the ones that are over this app to get our live version on there. And we're struggling with it for some reason. I don't know. I think it's on their end and not ours, but we're, we're struggling with it. But we're going to get it every week. It seems like that. How many of you know a lot of things in life are hard, but you can't give up so easy? Amen. You just have to press through. I, I had a presentation for you today. I saw a television program. Actually, it's one of my very favorites, and I'll tell you about it at the end of the message. And I wanted you to see a portion of it, and we have worked hours trying to get that so we, I could share a portion of it. And so many on that show are available that the one that I wanted, of course, that fit this message was not. And we did everything we could to get it. So, uh, And I also have some testimonies of some different people that are going to come in and throughout the the message, and there's some that are still going to do that, but half of the ones that I did had an attack physically. It's just like there's always something, but we never give up, and all these things were still more than conquerors, amen? But I want you to know that God must have something real special about today, because it's been a time of attack and, and just difficult to get through it all, but that's okay. We still got the victory, don't we? And God's still going to have his way, Amen? Don't you expect me to be the only one with the victory. How many of y'all have it? All right. Amen. I know you do. You just have to recognize it. Praise God. We're in part two of getting ready for the rest of your life. How many of you know your life is not over? You might have had some tough times, but your life is not over, and we need to get ready for the rest of our lives, and we're going to do that together. Last week, we talked about choosing your future, about our choices that we make. And one of the things that we talked about was that I gave you several different points, but one of them was we have to have certain values that we operate and live by. And one of those is no pain or short-term pain, long-term gain. Amen? Say it with me. Short-term pain, long-term gain. You've got to be willing to go through something temporarily knowing that it will reap something on a long-term in your life if you're willing to go through something short term right now most people want what they want right now and they're not willing to go through anything uh, I'll go ahead and tell you just a little bit about the show one of my favorite television shows is called mobbed how many of you have ever seen that show just a few of you but it's so inspirational there was one and maybe some of you that have watched it have seen this one it's called you're fired it was a young man that uh, was in California. He had to drop out of college because he did not have the money that he was able to continue. He went to California, he got a job, and he actually had two jobs, two jobs to make it, and he was homeless, and he's continued to remain homeless. He lived in his car. He was sharp looking. You'd never know it. He never made a big deal out of it. His parents, I don't know whether they were Christians or not, but they, let, let me just say this. You can benefit from following Christian principles, whether you're a Christian or not. If you live according to those principles, you will prosper and be blessed because you're following, whether you know it or not, you're following God's principles. There are some Christians that use the grace message, and you know I'm a grace fanatic. I think that grace is the most radical thing I've ever learned in my life. But some people can take that and just do nothing because God's done it all. But you have to do your part, too. And there are Christians that are not reaping the benefits that some non-Christians are 
are benefiting from because the non-Christians are walking in the principles of God and many Christians are saying, well, God's done and I don't have to do anything and they've misunderstood the whole concept. So if you're not fulfilled in your life because you're saying, well, God's said that I have favor and I'm blessed. Yes, he did, but you've got to do your part to access it, not earn it. It's yours. You're blessed. You've got favor, but you just can't keep walking around saying, I've got favor, I've got favor, and sit in your chair and don't go out and try to get a job on your own. You've got to still be generous and so and be forgiving and loving and do what God says. Those are principles that we live by. And one of the principles is be willing to have short-term pain for long-term gain. Amen? So there's some things I wished I would have done when I was in my early 20s. I would be reaping more long-term gain right now had I done those, and I haven't. And now I'm telling other people, don't do what I did. I wouldn't be feeling some of the pressure I feel right now if I had done what I should have done at an early age. I wish I had a church of just young, not just, but a lot of young adults to say, this is how to start for your future. Choose your future. They, it, God's not just going to come down and give you stuff. You've got to do your part. And when you do your part, God will give back to you and bless you, not just financially, but in your life, far beyond anything you ever imagined. I'm going to show you that from Scripture in just a few moments. But anyway, this young man was homeless, and yet he worked. He looked sharp. No one knew. He's so humble. In fact, I encourage you, if you have uh, On Demand, I have UVerse. I think if you have Time Warner, any of those things that has On Demand, go in it, look up Mobbed. I think it comes on Wednesday night. And, I, of course, I'm not watching it on Wednesday night. I don't ever watch live TV. I DVR everything. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't seen a commercial. Somebody said, do you like that one commercial? I said, I haven't seen any commercials. I don't watch commercials. I watch TV at my convenience. That way, it doesn't control me. I control it. I watch TV. I know you knew I was a sinner pastor, didn't you? I know I watch TV. But I watch because I record it in advance, and so I can choose when I see it. And Mobbed is one of those that's just great. So I encourage you to look up Mobbed, if you have On Demand, and pick the, the program that says you're fired. And I promise you, it'll have you in tears. And it'll affect you. And think of the message that I preached today. I wished I could show part of it to you, but I can't. That's okay. God knows. Anyway, he was homeless. He had two jobs. And his parents decided instead of just giving him everything, he was going to have to work for it. And it was going to be the hard way. Well, his boss was so impressed with his tenacity, his dedication, his sacrifice, that he decided that he wanted to mob him. And mob means, you know, hundreds of people break out and dance and all this crazy stuff, and it's just kind of, it's fun. It shocked him, surprised him. His uh, boss asked him to go and pick up a car, the first car that he and his wife ever had as a couple. So it was an older one. And to bring it to, to, to a place and park it, and they would valet it. Well, they, he had it all planned. But something fell down on top of it and smashed it, and he was the boy was devastated and just embarrassed and just didn't know what to do. And while I was trying to explain it to his boss, and his boss was looking at it and he was almost in tears, Dan the policeman that came up there started dancing and, and saying, It's gonna be all right, you know, that's that kind of stuff. And he was looking and freaked out. Before he knew it, hundreds of people had filled the streets dancing, and he just was freaked. And his parents had been flown in, and he hadn't seen them in some time because he was trying to prove to them that he could do it and that he could work, and they didn't know he was home. Nobody knew any of that stuff. Anyway, it was a beautiful surprise, and he was so humble and just cried and wept and just a wonderful young man from the Carolinas. He ended up getting a, a raise, a promotion, and his boss gave him a full scholarship to finish his college education and to be able to get what he wanted to do. What my point is, is that too many of us are expecting God's grace and expecting things to happen, but we don't want to do anything. Short-term pain? No, I want it now. God said I'm blessed. You can say that all you want, but if you don't put some action to it and access it, you're just going to be saying I'm blessed all your life and be unfulfilled as a Christian. And then want to almost blame God because you're not listening to proper teaching, the whole counsel of God. Yes, it's done. God's done everything he's going to do. Now we have to access it by what we are to do called responsibility. So 
honestly, we're getting ready for the rest of our lives. And one of the things that jump starts us with spiritual growth, which helps us to be prosperous in every area of our life, is the spiritual life and growth campaigns that we're doing. There are some of you, I love you, and I am not a condemnation person, but I am a motivation person. You have not signed up yet, and you kind of feel this is for everybody but you, and yet you're going to wonder why God didn't do something this year. This could be the thing that makes the difference and gives you the wisdom that it takes to access what God has for you. This young man was willing to be humble, to be homeless, and God blessed him. And God did above and beyond what he ever thought. And his parents were there to hug him, and there was tears, and I was blubbering like a baby. So try to get it and watch it. You'll be blessed. And remember, you've got a part in this thing called walking with God. Don't expect God to do everything just because he can do anything. You got some stuff to do, too. It's not to earn your favor. It's not to make God love you or be impressed with you. He cannot love you any more than he loves you. Even if you are a junkie on Skid Row, he loves you. He's not against you. We do these things because we're growing as believers. And I see too many believers today that expect it all to come from God, and they don't have to do anything. Well, you don't have to. The Bible says all things are lawful. Now, under grace, you can do anything you want to. But there's consequences for being lazy. There's consequences for taking the liberal way and just taking your liberties and not being responsible. You're still saved, but you sure are miserable in life. So I understand this. You're accepted. God loves you. It's about grace. It's not about what you do. It's about what he did. You can't earn this. You can't be good enough or do enough things to impress God. God already loves you as much as he ever will. But as you grow in God, there are things that our life begins to change because we make right choices instead of stupid choices. You can't keep living in stupid choices and expect good results. God's word has told us. So we're going to talk about those things, and that's just a little introduction there. We're going to talk about in the next six weeks, and I hope you will be a part of it, about discovering your calling in life. You're going to watch some videos at the beginning of the meeting that we have. It's an hour and a half for six weeks, 40 days. Just one hour and a half a week is all extra that I'm asking for you. And we're going to look at the videos, which is about 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Then we'll split up the next hour in small groups to discuss and to share We're going to have six different weeks, use six different features, and use six different learning styles that will motivate different people in different ways. One of those is reading. One of those is watching. One of those is talking in small groups. All of those different things. And if you're not in a group, you're going to want to get in it. You come on out on Sunday night, 5 to 6.30, and be a part of it. It'll change your life. There will be child care, by the way, as well. Um, Then we're going to motivate memorize together six different scriptures, short ones, but life scriptures, one a week, and it's going to make a difference together from the Word of God. You're going to hear six messages by me in this series on Sunday mornings. It's going to be parallel to what we're learning that week, so all together it will make sense to us. You're also going to be able to access a devotion online. Last year, they were emailed to you. This year, you'll have to access them online or on your smartphone. You can listen to it one a day. It's 10 minutes long, but it coincides with what we're learning. Churches and thousands and thousands of people all over the nation will be doing this at the same time, and it'll be accessed to you. And we're also asking you to read one proverb, one chapter of Proverbs a day, and we'll do that for the 40 days as well. Uh, then we're going to practice together what we're learning, and it's going to be a a really good time together. So I hope that you will consider uh, to be a part of that. Uh, This morning, though, I just want to begin by asking you a question, and uh, we're preparing for the campaign that we're going to be a part of. And uh, here's the question I want you to think about this morning. If God said to you, I'll give you anything you want in life, Just name one thing that you want, and I will give that to you. What would your answer be? What would you say, the only one thing? Yeah. 
what would it be that you would say you wanted? Well, I'd like fewer problems, Lord. Or I'd like to get married, maybe somebody would say. Or I'd like to get out of debt. Or I'd like to have more, and, or less rather than more, less than more conflicts with people and situations. I doubt that any of you would probably ask what Solomon asked for. I don't even know if I would, to be honest. I, now that I've studied, I would. But before the question was actually asked by God to a man by the name of Solomon one day. Now Solomon is the son of, was the son of David, the king of Israel, and later, later he became the king of Israel. And God asked Solomon one day, what would you like in life, Solomon? What's one thing that you would like in life? I'll give you anything you ask in life. Name one thing and I'll give it to you. And Solomon didn't ask for wealth. Solomon didn't ask for fame. He didn't ask for comfort. He didn't ask for pleasure. He said, God, I want you to give me wisdom. Give me wisdom, Lord. Make me the wisest man in all of the world. Wisdom? Really? If God had asked me what's the one thing that I have in my life, I don't know that I would have asked for wisdom, to be honest with you. Come on, are y'all with me? I don't know. I've got some other things. You probably wouldn't either. But that might be on my list, but it wouldn't be number one. I'm not saying now that I've studied, but come on, let's be honest. Say, yeah, me too, bro. All right. But Solomon, out of all the things that he asked God for, that was the one thing, more than anything, he wanted to be made wise. Um, God was so surprised and so impressed with that request, it touched his heart very, very much. And he said, not only am I going to give you wisdom, and here we, we again, you seek the right things, God will give you everything else that you think is so important that you want. He, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And God says, I'm so impressed with what you have asked for in wisdom. I'm also going to give you a lot of other things. I'll make you to be the wealthiest man in the world, the most famous man in the world, the most powerful man in the world. All these other things were given to him, he said, because you asked wisely for wisdom. Amen. We don't understand how important wisdom really is. We don't realize it's the key literally to everything else because when you have wisdom, you will have money because you'll know how to receive it and to spend it wisely. And the wisdom will access so many other areas. In fact, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing or the key thing to life. So it's a very, very important thing. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 11. And you'll see this in your notes if you're on your smartphone or tablet and on the screen here. The Bible says wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing else you could ever want is as valuable as wisdom. And God knew that. You say, are you kidding me? More, more, more precious than rubies? Nothing else I could ever, ever want is as valuable as wisdom. It says more precious than rubies. And I don't know if you know anything about the value of rubies. In looking it up, the highest quality of rubies is worth ten times more than what diamonds are actually worth. And I never understood that. In perspective, if I could just share it, a gram of gold is worth about 50 bucks, specifically a gram of gold, $53 today in 2013. A gram of rubies would be worth not 53 bucks, but $50,000. Same amount compared to gold. How many of you know that's a little bit more valuable than gold? Amen. And God is saying wisdom is more valuable than anything that you could possibly imagine. And if you get wisdom in your life, it will bless every other area of your life. So that's what today's message is and to encourage you to get in this campaign, to get the wisdom of God. And let me say this. So many people are saying, is it right or is it wrong? It's not so much about things being right or wrong. The question should not be that. The question should be, is it the wise thing to do? Because there are a lot of things that are not wrong, but it's how we do them. We have to use wisdom when we participate. For example, television and, and all the different things that I consider the junk food of life. It's a matter of how much and when, and if it's taking the place of spiritual things. There's nothing wrong with it. That's why I'm not ashamed because I watch television. But I have to do it in wisdom. And if I saturate my life totally with that or other things sports nothing wrong with football or basketball you know me i love that stuff 
I think it's great. But when that, when I know every statistic of most of the teams and who's in first place and the stats of all the players, and I can't quote one word of, uh, of scripture, I got my priorities backwards. That's all I'm saying. It's not wise to expect God's best, and yet you know more about sports and athletics than you do about the Word of God. Nothing wrong with sports and athletics. Nothing wrong with knowing that stuff. But can you tell me what the Bible says about how to live your life in a wise way? We've got to balance those things, and it's a very important thing. So it's not, is this right or wrong? A lot of things. Actually, Scripture, all things are lawful, but is it wise to go out and get drunk? Is that a wise thing? I mean, you could take your liberty, to, but is that a wise thing to do? No. It'll destroy your family. It'll destroy your life. It'll, it'll take everything and mix it all up and mess it all up. You can say, I'm free to do what I want to do. You are, but not without consequence. I'm not saying it'll keep you out of heaven, but it sure won't make you have a good life while you're here on this earth. And until I get to heaven, I still want to live some happy days on this earth. Amen? Don't you? I want to be fulfilled. I want to have peace. And I want God's best in this world as well. And he has provided it for me. So it's important that we grasp some of, of these things together. Um, more than anything else, what do we want to get from God? Wisdom. The Bible also says in Proverbs 4 and 7 that wisdom is the principal thing, is what it says in the King James. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Really? Really? I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have thought that getting wisdom was the most important thing I could do in life. But, but circle that in, in your Bibles. The most important thing or the principal thing is to get wisdom. First of all, what is wisdom? Wisdom is this, and I didn't give it to her to put on the screen, but it's not hard to remember. You can jot it down. Wisdom is seeing life from God's point of view. Wisdom is seeing life not from man's view, not from mama's view, not from your friend's view, but from God's point of view. That's having wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge. You can have knowledge and get knowledge in, from a lot of places. You can go to college. You can go to school. You can have all kinds of degrees. You can have a lot of knowledge. But a person can be knowledgeable and not wise. You can have all kinds of knowledge and still lack wisdom. A person can be educated and not wise. Wisdom and knowledge are two different things. A lot of educated people are actually fools. Have you ever met one? Don't answer that. <laughs> they're educated, but they're foolish. Amen? And there are a lot of people that have not got a degree or education, but they're very wise because they know the word, they know it comes from God, and they've lived, and they're making right choices through wisdom. So wisdom is seeing life from God's point of view. It says, of all things in life, getting wisdom is the most important thing that you can do. That's what that scripture there in Proverbs chapter 4 tells us, okay? What I want us to do this morning is a couple of things. First of all, I want us to look, number one, at why wisdom should be important to me. Why is it the most important thing that I should want? Why should it be the number one goal of my life to get wisdom? Why is it that most important thing? And secondly, how do I get wisdom? How do I get it? So that's what we're going to look at this quickly this morning. Fortunately, Solomon, who was the wisest man, wrote it in a book, and that book is called the Book of Proverbs. And I've asked you to turn there uh, in your Bibles this morning to the Book of Proverbs. It's in the middle of your Bible. In fact, if you just take your Bible and you turn to the very middle, you will come to the Book of Proverbs. That is where it is at. And the Proverbs is a book that teaches us how to live wisely. There are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. That means if you read a chapter of day, you would go through the entire book of Proverbs at least once a month, okay? Once a month. And uh, I know there are a lot of businessmen. Some are Christians, some aren't even Christians, but they know that Proverbs is a book of wisdom and teaches you how to live and be successful. And there are a lot of people that aren't even Christians that follow the book of Proverbs because they know there is all kinds of wisdom in there. It talks to you about wisdom of life in general and relationships and business and money and time and all of that kind of a thing. Let me read to you from the book of Proverbs, uh, just the introduction to it would be Proverbs chapter 1, and I'm going to read a different translation, and it'll be on the screen if it uh, is not what your Bible is saying, but it, it's the same thing, but just a little bit of a different translation. So let me begin reading it to you. It says, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. The purpose of these Proverbs is to teach people wisdom and discipline and to help them understand wise sayings. 
Through these proverbs, people will receive instruction and discipline, good conduct in doing what is right, just, and fair. These proverbs will make the simple-minded clever. That means if you're dumb, it'll make you smart, <laughs> okay? Uh, these will give knowledge and purpose to young people. If you're a young adult or our teenagers are in another youth service, and by the way, parents, the teenagers are going to be going through this the same time that we are. And Pastor Robbie will be teaching that to them, and they'll be going through the same thing, but with, uh, from, on a teenager's perspective and basis. So I think that's good because it says here, that uh, if you're a young person, this will give knowledge and purpose to young people. So if a person is young or in, in their early years uh, as, as a teenager or a young adult, they should be devouring the book of Proverbs to learn how to live and what to do. Amen? It says, let those who are wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. And let those who understand receive guidance by exploring the depth of meaning of these Proverbs, these parables, these wise sayings, and these riddles. Whoever is responsible, could you get me my water and bring it up here? I, I'm going to need that in just a moment. So over and over again, the Bible, in the Bible, God expresses the importance of wisdom, okay? The importance of getting that. He says it's the number one thing that you want in life. It should be your number one goal. And if you get wisdom, it's going to affect every other thing in your life. Everybody got that? That's why it's important. Say amen if you got it, okay? Proverbs 9 and verse 12 says this. If you become wise, you'll be the one to benefit. Circle that word, benefit. You'll be the one. It brings personal benefit to you if you become wise, okay? Why? Because the problems in your life, basically the problems in our wife becomes, a lot of them come because of a lack of wisdom. How many of you haven't used wisdom in your financial practices before? Everybody in the room. And if we knew better, maybe if we knew what it was going to result, you know, we think it's going to work out all right, but it often doesn't. So we will get the benefit if we learn wisdom, okay? We make foolish decisions. We make foolish uh, relational decisions and financial decisions, and then we're the ones to blame, not God. So there's a verse in the Bible, if you remember, it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is what? Death. You reach dead ends, you reach things that fall apart, and decisions that I make like that about money or other things end up in trouble, in other words, because I did the wrong thing and there wasn't wisdom there. Relationships, all kinds of things, just foolish decisions because I lack wisdom and I keep running up against dead ends. Are you with me? So if I fill my life with wisdom, I'm going to be the one that benefits. And there, Proverbs 9 and 1, or 12 uh, tells me that very, very thing, that I'm going to have more success if I have wisdom in my life than if I just keep say, playing the God card. God will bless me. I'm favored. You know, you can say that, but you've got to use some wisdom in your choices. Are you understand what I'm saying? So the book Pro of Proverbs lists all kinds of reasons and benefits of why wisdom ought to be your number one goal. And the reason I'm telling you this is the next six weeks, that's what we're going to do, is learn some wisdom. And I encourage you not to let it go by. And then you come in and you want me to counsel you for two hours. And I'm going to say, did you go to, the, to the, the spiritual growth camp? Oh, I didn't have time for that. And yet you have time for me and you to sit down for hours and go through dumb decisions that we made? I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, I love you, no condemnation, but come on, folks, most of our problems is because of things we do, amen, or even responding wrongly to things that maybe even somebody else did. Let's look at some other scriptures just real quick, Proverbs 24 and 14. In fact, let me just say this, um, there's going to be a lot of benefits, and I want you to see some of these benefits and jot them down. There's actually, I'm going to just basically read these scriptures. I don't have time to, to talk a lot, but I see 18 benefits to having wisdom. I've told you why we need wisdom, why it's the most important thing. Now we're going to talk about what it'll do if I get wisdom, okay? So just gr grasp them real quickly. Proverbs 24 and verse 14 says, wisdom is good for the soul. You might circle that. Wisdom is good for the soul. Get wisdom and you'll have a bright future. That's number two. I'm going to give you 18 things just real quickly. You'll have a bright future. It's good for the soul and you'll have a bright future. You want to succeed in life? Look at what the Bible says, Proverbs 19, verse 8. Those who get wisdom do themselves a favor and those who love learning will succeed. See that? That's number three. Will succeed when there's wisdom. That's the next thing. You want to be successful in life? It's pretty simple. Wise up. Learn wisdom. The more wisdom you have, the more success that you'll have. 
Do y'all understand what I'm saying? This is pretty simple, but the Bible teaches things simple. Amen? Proverbs 4 and verse 8. Take a look at it. Treasure wisdom, and it will make you great. Circle that. That's number four. Hold on to it, and it will bring you honor. That's number five. I know I'm going fast, but these are the benefits of wisdom. So the first few verses, we see wisdom's good for you. It'll give you a bright future. It'll cause you to succeed. It'll make you great, and it'll give you honor. How many of you think wisdom is important? How many of you would say, I don't have enough time to get everything I need to get done in my life? Well, how many of you would say, if you, that would say that that's really not a time problem, that's a wisdom problem? I don't know what, I don't know how to wisely choose what to do. And I waste hours doing stuff that's really not important. I don't have a lot of wisdom in my time management. And the next verse tells us this. It's Proverbs 9, verse 11. Wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life, it says. Wow. What's he saying? It'll multiply your days. When you're wise, the wiser you are, the wiser you manage your time. And the better you manage your time, the more you're going to have of it. I don't have time to come to this. That's because you don't understand how to make wise choices. And life is telling you what to do instead of you telling life, this is how I'll manage you. Learn some wisdom from the book of Proverbs and you'll begin to live life differently. You have time for what's important to you. You have time for what's important to you. You don't know how to wisely pick priorities. Oh, I love God. I know you love God, but you don't, wouldn't know it by your lifestyle. I'm not condemning you. I'm just talking me too. Same thing. If I never pray, if I never see God, if I never read the Bible, I can expect all those things, but I, I'm not learning anything. And if I learn them and I don't apply them, that's even worse. Because then I think just because I sit and know it, that I'm going to get it. That, that's crazy. Are you with me? So we have to learn it and apply it, and it begins to make sense, okay? We make foolish decisions about our time, and then we just say, I don't have time. No, we allowed our priorities to mess up our time. The busiest people are the ones that get the jobs done. If I want something to be done, I go to a busy person, but they know how to prioritize their time, and they'll get the job done. The people that say, I'm too busy, usually just don't know how to manage time and are unwise. Come on now. Somebody says, hmm, more time. Wisdom brings more time. Now you have my attention. It's going to cause success to us because we're doing the right things. Proverbs 24 and 5. Wise people have great power. Circle that. Great power. The more wisdom, the more power in our life is manifest because we're choosing things from God's point of view rather than ours. Uh, Proverbs 3 and 35. Sorry, I'm going fast, but there's a lot of material here. Wise people gain honorable reputations. Wow. Circle that. The wiser they are, the more people are going to notice you and like you. Using wisdom, integrity, honesty, choosing the right things the right way. Eric Thomason is here, and I know I, I don't mean to keep embarrassing you on Sunday, but I heard him on the radio yesterday, KRLD. I was just driving around, and, and I didn't like what I heard on the music stage. Just, I, it just it didn't motivate me. I want to hear the news a little bit, what's going on. And, and it was Saturday, so they don't often have the news except every hour in the hour. I was KRLD, and they said, we're going to hear in a moment Eric Thomason of Blue Nail uh, Roofing, who's the general manager. Of, well, uh, Eric is the one that's helping us with our roof. He did uh, our, uh, Pastor Sue's house, and he did a lot of our other, uh, Pastor Connie's house, and just did a great job and helped us with the finances to keep it as low as possible. And there they had him on television. I'm giving you a plug here. I know you're embarrassed. Put a hat on your head or something, but I'm just saying, they, they, he said, you know, we, we deal with thousands of people, but this guy is different. He's honest. He has integrity, and it just went on and on and on. And I said, I'm glad I know that guy. That's our roofer. And now he's starting to come to church with his wonderful wife and two children. So Eric, just wave. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with having a good reputation. That's good. And KRLD was just talking about him. It was called the Consumer Report. Here's somebody you can trust. Most of them you can't, but here's one you can. I know John Mays and his family also uh, used him, and it was a good thing. Having a right reputation because he's made wise decisions in his business. Hello? When you do the right thing, According to God's point of view, God will begin to bless it. Now, you can even be an unbeliever and do that. God will still bless you. Okay? 
But if you do the right thing and God will bless you and you are one of his kids, I'll bless somebody if, I, if I'm working with them and they're not my kid. They do the right thing, I'll bless them. But if they're family, double blessing. See what I'm saying? God wants to bless his kids. But sometimes, just like the young man, that his parents didn't give him everything because he had some things he needed to learn. And he was humble, and God blessed him even beyond. His parents might have been a little rough. I, I, I couldn't do what those parents did, not help my kids with anything. I mean, I'm not judging them. Obviously, they raised a wonderful, humble, great kid that isn't spoiled and wasn't afraid to do the right thing and blame everybody else because he didn't have anything. He lived in his car, worked a job, and looked like a million dollars. Probably had one shirt he washed every night, but he walked out there looking like a million dollars, holding his head up high with not much in his life, willing to pay the price. And God saw it, and God said, that boy needs favor. And he got all the things that he never really was asking for. He sought God first, or did the right thing first, and God added all the things to you. That's the way it were. Today, it's we want to sit in our easy chair and claim God's going to do it. And you got to do your part, and God will do his part in ways that you could never even dream, better than you ever thought. The Bible says he'll do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we could imagine. And I can imagine a lot of things. Who can my mind imagine? God will do beyond that. I just got to do it with wisdom from his point of view. Are you getting anything out of this right now? This is really important stuff. Having a great reputation. Amen? Next verse, Proverbs 15 and verse 24 says, wise people's lives get better and better. How many of you want a better year this year than last year? Then we need to learn some wisdom from God. Amen? And not keep repeating the same foolish mistakes and errors of our past. I don't care what your past is. I don't care what you came from. I don't care what you went through. I want to know, did you learn anything? Are you making different decisions now? And that's all that matters. Everybody has a past and a record. Don't tell me. I don't care about it. If you want to share it, that's fine. But people, well, what happened? Where were you? What were you in for? What'd you? All you want is gossip. What you might ask is, oh, wow. You went through some things. You lost your home. You've been divorced. And Well, what, what did you learn from those things? That's the wise question. See, you learn things if you ask the right questions. If all you want is details and information, that's all you're going to learn. I don't need to learn that because we've all got stuff that we could talk about that would be juicy and informational, but that might not help you learn anything. You can learn something from everybody if you learn to ask the right questions. What did you learn from that? When you lost your family and you lost your home, what did you learn from that? And let them tell you the different choices they make today. Somebody that looks like they're perfect and all together is either lying or they hadn't had their crisis yet. But we all go through stuff in this world, don't we? And somebody that doesn't have some scars, I usually say, oh, you look too pretty. I think I need somebody with a couple scars over here. Let me ask you. You know, it's like somebody giving a marriage seminar and they never even had a date, much less been married. That's not the one I want to hear anything about, it, amen? I want to know somebody, that's, and people that have happy marriages, I told you last year, have, they might have them now, but they went through hell getting there. We all have to struggle and make wise choices and learn. Learn. Everybody say learn. Ooh, I got to go fast. I'm talking too much. How many of you noticed I spend a lot of time on my first two points and my last ones I give them to you in two seconds? I've done that all my life. I try hard not to do it. Let me give you an acrostic as we wind up. It's learn, L-E-A-R-N, and there's something for every letter, and I'm going to give them to you fast, and we'll wrap it up to stay. L is for list. This is how to be, start to be wise, and we're going to do this together in this spiritual growth campaign. Number one, L, listen to God's word every day. Not just listen to the radio, not just listen to television, not just listen and read what's on the internet, but where wisdom comes from is from God, seeing life from God's point of view. Proverbs 1 and 7 says, start with God. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When I respect God enough to, to come to his house and to worship him and start with God, that's the beginning of wisdom. 
Proverbs 2 and 6 says, It is the Lord who gives wisdom. From him comes knowledge and understanding. You don't get that from television. How many of you know you're not going to get wise following what the Kardashians have been doing? I mean, everybody's into that kind of thing. That's not going to get you wisdom. That'll mess you up. Wisdom comes from God. So we start with God. Amen? So are we going to be wiser these other things? No. So what we're doing this campaign is to kind of give you a kickstart to begin to, in small groups and in our, the video that we see and our study and the workbooks, and it's just $10. You get the workbook, and you, that's your registration. That's all it costs. That's a deal to get started with wisdom. The Bible says this in Proverbs 15 and 14. A wise person is hungry for truth while the foo, fe, fool while the fool feeds on trash. Now let me say this. There's three types of food. There's what I call poison stuff that'll just flat kill you. There is junk food. And then there's healthy food. There's some things it's a no-brainer. It'll kill you. You keep doing that, you're dead. And I'm talking spiritually too. Then secondly, there's just junk food, which we all love. And then there's healthy food. Now, if you, if you take the poison, you're dead. Okay, I don't have, that's self-explanatory. But we do a lot with junk food. Now, let me say this. If I'm sitting at home in my easy chair and I eat a whole bag of Cheetos, then I get Fritos and bean dip, and we mix it, our family, we mix mayonnaise and bean dip and mix that stuff up. Ooh, is it ever good? It's awesome. Try it. Don't you ooh me until you try it. It's the best stuff ever. And you just dip those Fritos in there. Man, I can go through a whole bag and eat that bean dip. If I go through Cheetos and bean dips, and then, man, I get me a couple of candy bars, and I eat those, and then I love ice cream, and I love ice cream sandwiches. I always have homemade vanilla bluebell and ice cream sandwiches in my freezer. And so if I have about four ice cream sandwiches and a, and a big old bowl of, of van homemade vanilla with that Hershey's chocolate syrup over the top, man, if there's a little bit of Cool Whip left, I'll add a little of that to the top. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> and then it's time for dinner. How many of you know I don't want to have the dinner? The dinner is chicken fried steak, it's green beans, it, I mean, it's all healthy, good stuff. I don't know how chicken fried steak, that wasn't a very good illustration. I live in Texas, so it's hard not to say that. But you know what I'm saying? Then it's time for a good, healthy meal. I don't want any. Why? Because I have filled my life with and my body with junk food. Now, there's nothing wrong with some Cheetos and some homemade bluebell vanilla. But I got to be wise. If I fill up myself with all of that kind of stuff, Come on, and the world is so accessible. I've got my smartphone. I've got my tablet. I've got all these, and junk, 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 junk. And now it's time for church. Ah, I don't feel like going today. Why? Because I'm already full. Think about it. I'm already full. There's nothing wrong. It's not that there's sin, that there's horror. It's too much of that and not enough of God. Some people can't sit through one of my, they're too long, they're too long. They're too, I know, I know, I know. For people that have filled their life on other things. But then there are people that go, why did you stop? Oh, why did you stop? Because people can't take it any more than what I'm giving them. But some, but the, because everybody fills their life up with other things and then comes in and just wants a 30-second. Some people advertise one-hour services, jam-packed. They have three or four services because people don't want to spend any time eating the things of God. They don't want to. An hour and a half extra? I can't do that. You could if you're hungry. You could if you weren't filled up with so But no, of course you're not hungry when you filled yourself with so many other things. Not sinful things, just junky things. Just junk food. Now, I admit every now and then I wake up at night and I'm hungry, and if there's nothing in the refrigerator, I get up and I go down to Jack in the Box and I get two tacos for a dollar and a small fry. At midnight, you might see me driving through and asking for two of those greasy tacos. Love Jack in the Box tacos. And a small fry. I have to have a fry with them. I don't know why they don't match, but I have to have a fry with them. And then I balance it out with a Diet Coke. You know, that, that, cancels, that, that cancels all the calories. And sometimes at midnight, I get the craving for that. Oh, that's okay a little bit, but if all I do is eat junk food all the time, there's no room for broccoli. And I love broccoli, and I love the healthy stuff, but I don't if I'm full already. So it's not that those things are wrong. It's that that's all we do. And then we wonder why we don't want God or we don't want to hear more of the word. It's because we're already full. Does that make sense? Learning is important. All right, I am going way too slow. The second thing, oh, Jesus, help me. 
The second thing is E. I'm going to ask you, enlist some, some friends to come with you to this thing. I don't want to go by my, ask somebody, let's go together. You heard pastor, you know, he's just, let's just get him off our back. Let's go together. Support one another. Enlist somebody else to stand with you during that time, okay? I'm just skipping so much, but that's okay. Um, even some of the scripture. Proverbs 13 and 20 says this. Spend time with the wise and you'll become wise, but friends of fools will suffer. Duh. Birds of a feather flock together. Amen. Okay, learn. L-E-A is we're going to ask questions. If you're going to learn, you need to ask questions and accept correction. That's what our small groups are about, to ask questions and to talk and to give your opinion and let other people say, no, 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 that's, this is what the Bible says. Really? And talk, okay? So that's another one. Learn to ask things. Proverbs 18, 15, intelligent people are always open to new ideas. In fact, they look for them. Amen? How many of you know that if we're talking all the time, we're never learning anything? If all I do is talk, and when you go in a, in a small group, we, it's especially somebody that leads a small group. The hardest thing I ever did was lead a small group because I, sh I knew that if I was going to help people, I didn't talk much, and I tend to talk, and I shouldn't talk. I introduce the questions, and then I need to listen. You never learn if you're always talking. So we need to listen to certain things. Amen? Okay. Um, being willing to listen. It's Proverbs 19, 27. If you stop learning, you'll forget what you already know. Proverbs 19, 27, if you stop learning, you will forget what you already know. Isn't that the truth? Some people graduate. They walk out and they go, I'll never open another book. Oh, that's death. I don't want a doctor that says, oh, I got my doctor's degree. I'll never open another book. I want him to constantly be learning. If I'm going to be, he's going to be my doctor. How about you? Why do we think, oh, I've been in the church for years. I don't need these things. Are you kidding me? The Bible is filled with revelation you haven't found. And people, I just don't think I need it. That is unwise. You have the freedom to do with no condemnation. But don't come to me telling me what's happening in your life. And you haven't availed yourself of what we, through the Holy Spirit, have spoken to us, are giving you the opportunity to get wisdom. That's on you, not on me, not on you. Well, the pastor didn't have, no, I am preaching to you now, honey. It ain't on me, it's on you. I love you. I heard one person say, I love you. You're supposed to love me back. Thank you. I do love you, and I mean that. And that's why we're having this together. Okay? And the last one, th did I give you R? Oh, R is remember what you learn. And that's why we're going to at least memorize one scripture a week to the best of our abilities. Remember and reinforce what we've learned. And then N, the last one of N. Sorry, I have all those things that I have the PowerPoint for, but... In is now do it. Now do it. Um, very quickly, I want, can you, can you be better than me? I want just Randall Hill, Lisa Hill, Randall Young rather, Lisa Hill and uh, Pam Jenkins to quickly come because it's time for us to go. Real quick, y'all, run up here. Real quickly, these are some folks that first of all, I respect all three of these people. I'm their pastor and I know their life. I know that things aren't perfect in their life, but I know they're word people. Let's come right down here. Let's be homey. I know they're word people. I know that they tithe, they give, they love their church, they give grace gifts, but not just that, their life is a life of victory and not whining. There's lots wrong in their life as far as circumstances, but they know that they've needed the word, and I want them just to give a quick testimony of why the word in times like this is very, very important to them. Lisa is a, sun, is a Sunday person. She's a Wednesday night. She, she has things. She's a single mom. Just go very, very quickly. Just tell a little bit of why the word is important to you with what you've gone through. Um, first of all, I would like to share that I am a single mother of four children. And so I know we have a lot of single ladies here in the church today. And I have a, I have three boys and one girl. I have a, my oldest is, has a drug addiction. Beautiful, if you see him, he's a beautiful young, young man. But that's, 
that's that's what's going on. I have another son who's in who's in jail, who is his future is in his life is in God's hands at this moment. And you know, my other two children are a daughter and a son. And so I say that because the word says that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And I live on that. And I lived on that before those things happened. I wasn't as strong in that faith. But I'm still learning and I'm still walking. And I know that 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 he knew that my children would be in those situations and in those positions. He knew that. And so I just encourage those that are going through. Being a single parent, did I ever think that my child would be in a situation like that? Raising them from little to to young adults, did I ever not once think that anything that I did, I could have done differently? I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed for what today is. And so I just encourage you, single mothers, if I can do it, I know you can. Because I'm not ashamed. And I, God's presence, it, just to have, be in his presence for just a moment will make you feel that there's nothing no one can do or say. They can ever change that or take that from you. So I just, you know, encourage you that if you've ever had a child that's in the system like that, I still have hope. And we have to have hope. And we have to, I'm here for somebody else. Yeah. What I'm going through is for somebody else to get to get it like I did. And if I don't share that, then what is it worth to him who gave me what I have today? He gave me his love. Very good, Lisa. And I, I want you to know that she's living this. Sometimes I know pain is all over her sometimes, but she's she's here she's learning she's going to be in these things wednesday night we had guests that were here and they, they were the last ones out she was over. i was just telling about the church but i said that's great lisa she has time for other people and i just don't believe in giving flowers when people are dead but these people are not victorious because everything's right in their life they are because they're in the word of god and they're making wise choices i'm proud of you amen we all know pam's situation physically of uh, the, the the situation that just could take her life at any minute in the natural but she's in every service she can be in. She's a giver. She loves God. And depending upon the word, just give us a quick, quick word here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Well, I'm not one who's just usually short for words. Those of you that know me, I can talk. <laughs> Last week when I came, I was on a cane. And it in a lot of pain and not just physical pain and yesterday I spent a whole lot of extra time with my Lord and read the promises in his word and one thing I've learned is the more you read his word and the more you trust him the more peace he gives you and it matters not what you're going through or what the world is offering to you. And it matters not that no one else understands. I love my father, and I have dear friends here at work, friends I've known for my, throughout my life, but they can't be Jesus to me. And when I went to sleep last night, I still had a lot on my mind, but I went to sleep in the middle of God's Word. And when I woke up this morning, I felt his arms around me, and he said, today, you don't need a cane. Today, I'm your cane, and you can lean on me. So I just want to tell you to press on into God's word and come next Sunday night so that you can grow in your spiritual walk and come to destiny because here you're among fellow believers. Thank you. We're proud of you, Pam. God's hand is on you, and, and he's blessing you. We want you to know that. Randall, God bless you, man. We appreciate you very, very much. You're a man of God. You're just an inspiration to a lot of people. 
uh, quiet in many, many ways, but a man of power once you open your mouth. It's worth it. Worth the wait. Uh, Ronald, uh, or, or, uh, Randall and his family uh, lost a son that was uh, that murdered this last year. It was tough. And uh, I've seen him go through things like this in his family, and yet he stands strong. Just give us the word of what God's doing. Share your testimony. I guess I can only testify because I've been through a test, which that's kind of what it means. But what you said about uh, what the word means, I'm sitting here trying to find words to put it all in in just the, the brief moment that we hear, that we have. Uh, I guess early on, I just, just from the scripture, just a little bit of knowledge I received when I came to Christ from the scripture. You've taken John in the beginning was the word. The word was God, was with God. So part of it is, is uh, the word is important to me because I figured in order for me to know God, I got to know the word. I mean, that's just the way my mind thinks. Like I said, I'm a country boy. I'm not educated. I don't have these high degrees and all that. So I try to keep it simple. To know God, I got to know the word, you know. And so I figure, uh, I mean, I know all these other things that I've learned before I came to God. And so, just somehow or another, so I just thought, you know, trying to get the word. I want to know the word. And, and, and so, what I am today is a product of the word. Not perfect by any means, but even in that, I find out in the word that goodness and mercy follows me. You see what I'm saying? So, I don't get condemned when I mess up or screw up because of the word told me that, hey, I love you unconditionally. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, it's knowing the word. Is it is the most <laughs> you've been saying it all all morning, Pastor? Wisdom, knowing the word, because anything you want to know, you're gonna find it out. We do that in the world. You want to, like you said about sports, the people that are into sports. I got friends like that can quote players' names, numbers, stats. I can't do that because, but I can quote some scriptures now. But in the beginning, I couldn't do that. You know, and it's just them, like you said, there are laws that God put in place. Seed time and harvest. Being a country boy, I understand if you plant a seed, eventually it's going to produce. I plant God's word, eventually it's going to produce something in me. I mean, just taking those little everyday principles and God helping me to understand the word, time, harvest. And so that's what has sustained me, will sustain me. Like I say, the word is the utmost in you can start at any time. You can start if some of you may have fallen off. You fall back. But you can always come back to the word. That seed is an incorruptible seed. That's what the word says. So anytime you go back and start watering that seed, you're going to find out there's some seeds that may be dormant or begin to produce. And, and I'll, 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 I'll just quit with this, Pastor. Let me quit. With, let me start with this here. There are things that you and I know as Christians. There's things that we know are true. But in life, we experience things, things happen that we don't understand. We don't know. We have those questions. Why? Me? This, 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 right? This is what I've learned. And I'm going to share it with, 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 with you guys. And I have to remind myself, the Lord reminds me. Do not forget or abort what you know when you can't figure out what you don't know. We, we sung today. I was singing. God is good. Yeah. Right? That's something I know I got from the word. So regardless of what happened, I'm going to remember God is good. Even though I can't figure out why, what, when, how, why me, God, you're good. You're a good man, Randall. I love it. That's excellent. Excellent. Ushers, get ready to distribute what I have, and they're going to walk out. Just, just everybody take one of these. That was great, Randall. All of you, I respect Randall very much. God's blessed him. God's using him. And uh, the minute I talked to him when he first visited uh, some time ago, a year or two ago, how long it's been, I knew he was a word man. We stood in the lobby, and we just started exchanging scriptures. And he wasn't religious. He was just spiritual. He had an insight because he was hungry. And I connected to him and his family immediately, loved them, and, re and esteemed them highly. And they're a blessing to this house. And just knowing him, he'll give you some wisdom. So I'm just telling you, he's a good man. And not a perfect man, neither am I, but he's a good man. 
he will bless you. Guys, just go right ahead. Please pass them out immediately. I want everybody to receive one. I want you to look at, look up at me. Receive it, but look up at me. I'm going to ask you to put your name on the line regarding this upcoming seminar, this spiritual campaign. I don't have time. You need to make the time and put God first and get this word in your life so that you'll have a testimony and say, hell broke out, but I knew the word and I still got joy and God turned it all around. Just want you to take it, look through there very quick, and I've put the same letters, L-E-A-R-N. I'm going to listen to the word. These are the things I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to not miss the next six Sunday mornings. I'm asking you to come an hour and a half on Sunday night to be in a small group, to listen to the devotion, to read one proverb a day, uh, a proverb chapter of a proverbs a day. You say, oh my gosh, I can't. This is the first time you've ever been challenged. If all I do is give you ooey gooey, woo that was nice stuff, but we don't do anything, I've wasted my breath and you've wasted your time coming to church. So I'm going to ask you to do it. Fill it out, and then we're going to receive it. Somebody said, I don't get involved in church. Well, it's time to change that. This is your opportunity. Fill it out and take a look at it. If you have any questions, I'm going to be in the lobby, and I'll talk to you. It's only $10 for registration. You'll get a workbook to go through it with you, and that's all that you'll have to give financially unless you want to buy the book and the other things, okay? Man, it seems like time rushes. Somebody said, if you wouldn't worship so long, are you kidding me? I couldn't do without the worship. It's everything. And anyway, this is the only time a week that we gather, so it ain't going to kill us, is it? Quit eating spiritual Cheetos and start eating the Word of God. Fill that out, sign in the dotted line, and say, I'll be here, Pastor. You're making the effort to put this forward. I'm going to be here. I'm not going to blame anybody but myself and my lack of time management and the fact that I filled myself. I'm not hungry because I'm eating wrong things. Okay, let's change that. You have an opportunity. No condemnation on anybody I promise you we love everybody but I love you too much not to challenge you so I'm asking you to do this for six weeks for 40 days to transition from lethargy to growth fill it out and let's come together amen father I pray as we close this service that people won't stick that in their Bible and act like they hadn't been challenged please God talk to all of us this could be a life-changing moment as we march towards Easter and the resurrection celebration. It could be the best one we've ever had. Thank you for these testimonies today. Thank you for challenging us in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Ushers, come on down.